In this video, I'm going to explain the extended Euclidean algorithm. So this algorithm helps us calculate two things. The first thing is the GCD of two positive integers a and b. So the GCD is the greatest common divisor, and after we calculate it, we can express it as a times x plus b times y. And this has lots of applications in science and engineering. So let's go ahead and start with our first example the GCD of 252 and 198. The first step is just take the larger number and divide it by the smaller number. So 252 divided by 198 gives us approximately 1.27. The second step is write it as an equation. We have 252 is equal to 198 times 1, and this 1 comes from this part here, and then plus x where x is the remainder. And why do we have x? Well, it's because we divide this and we get a decimal, which means that if we take 1 times 198, we have to plus something to get 252. So let's go ahead and solve for the remainder, and we get 54. We are almost done. We just have to repeat this process. So we bring the 198 down here, and the 54 down here, and simply repeat the process. Again, 198 divided by 54 gives us approximately 3.66. So we put the number 3 into our brackets, and then we solve for the remainder, which turns out to be 36. And then we take the 54, we bring it down here, and the 36, we bring it down here, and then we have 54 divided by 36, which is 1.5. We put the 1 here, find the remainder, which is 18 bring the 36 down, and then we bring 18 down. So 36 divided by 18 is 2. We put 2 in the brackets, and what is the remainder? Well, it's going to be 0. So at this point, we're going to stop. Now, sometimes your teacher might want you to write one extra line. They might want you to bring this down here, and then bring the 0 down here, and then this is where you actually stop. And that's just because when you write a computer program, the program stops when this number here is 0. So that's why you have to write one extra line. Last but not least, the GCD of 252 and 198 is going to be this number, which is 18. So what we just went through is the first part of the extended Euclidean algorithm. And this here is going to be the second part, and it's actually very easy. Let's ignore the last two lines, and we start with this one. So we have 54 is equal to 36 times 1 plus 18. Now we rewrite this as 18 is equal to 54 minus 36 times 1. Right? So we just keep the 18, we throw everything else to the other side. So we have 18 is equal to 54 minus 36 times 1. Pretty simple so far. And this is called equation 1. We do the same thing with this one. So we have 36 is equal to 198 minus 54 times 3. This is equation number 2. And then we have 54 is equal to 252 minus 198 times 1. And this is equation number 3. Let's take this equation and write it down here. So we just copy it down, and we're going to cross out equation 1, meaning that we used it. Now, we look at equation 2, and we see that we have a 36. And here we also have a 36, so we replace this 36 with 198 minus 54 times 3, and then cross out equation 2. Let's simplify this equation. So we have 54 minus 198 minus 54 times 3 times 1. So that's just going to get rid of itself, and then this becomes 54 minus 198 plus 54 times 3, which becomes 54 times 4 minus 198. And now we're going to look at equation 3 and we have 54. So we replace 54 with 252 minus 198 times 1 and then get rid of equation 3, so cross it out. We are almost done. So here we have 198 times 1. We don't need to write the times 1, so we rewrite it like this, and then we have 4 times 252, then take 4 times 198, that's what we're going to have. And then we're going to simplify this part. 
So we have 18 is equal to 252 times 4 minus 198 times 5. If you remember, this was the equation that I introduced at the very beginning. And we know that the GCD of 252 and 198 is going to be 18. And then here we have 252 times x plus 198 times y. So if you guess it, x is going to be 4. And then how about y? Well, if you notice, here is a plus sign. So we have to change this to a plus sign first. We can bring this minus sign into the 198. So it's the same as plus negative 198 times 5. You can totally do that. And then you notice that 198 has to be a positive number. Here it is a negative number. So you can bring the negative sign into the number 5. And now it is into the form that we want. So y is going to be negative 5. So that is the extended Euclidean algorithm. Now there is a second way to do it. And if you're interested, I'm going to show you right now. We have a table like this. Sometimes your professor might ask you to fill in a table like this. And where did I get these numbers from? Well, it's just from this part. So I just take it and fill it in here. And then I'm going to show you how to compute x and y. And at the end, we're going to get x is 4 and y is negative 5. I'm going to make the table a little bit more thin so it's easy to see. And we're just going to fill in the initial value. So the first row, this is going to be 1 and 0. And the second one is going to be 0 and 1. And then there are these two formulas that we can use. So x of i is equal to x of i minus 2 minus q of i minus 2 times x of i minus 1. The second formula is very similar. So y of i is equal to y of i minus 2 minus q of i minus 2 times y of i minus 1. So it's the exact same thing up here, but it's just y instead of x. Let's find x for row number 2. So we have this formula and x sub 2 is equal to x of 2 minus 2 gives you 0, then minus q of i minus 2. So that's 2 minus 2 that gives you 0, and then x of i minus 1. So 2 minus 1 gives you 1. What is x of 0? So x at row 0 is going to be 1. So that's why we have 1, then minus q at row 0. So we have q at row 0, and that's going to be a 1. And then x at row 1. So x, that we have row number 1, and that's going to be a 0. 1 minus 1 times 0 will give you 1. And then we fill in this part. How about y at step number 2, or row number 2 here? I'm going to let you try on your own. And so this is what you should have at the end. You should have negative 1. And then we fill in x sub 3. You're going to get negative 3. And then y sub 3 will give you 4. And then you have x of this row, or row number 4. We're going to get 4. And then y sub 4 will give you negative 5. So this here will be our answers. You might be wondering, what is the runtime of the extended Euclidean algorithm? Well, it's going to be O of log A or O of log B, whichever integer is smaller. Now you can rewrite this as O of log of min AB, which means the exact same thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and like and let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below.